नमस्ते नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू सेकंड पीयूसी फिजिक्स क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द एसी सर्किट व्हिच कंटेन्स रेजिस्टर इंडक्टर एंड कैपेसिटर राइट नमस्ते होप यू आर डूइंग वेल वेलकम टू द क्लास सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट रेजिस्टर्स व्हेन दे आर कनेक्टेड टू एसी सर्किट द करंट एंड वोल्टेजेस आर इन फेज uh when uh, capacitor is connected to an ac circuit current leads in the beginning itself current is highest and uh, so if you take the equation as uh, v is equal to vm sin omega t to represent uh, voltage across the capacitor then the current through the capacitor will be i is equal to im sin omega t plus pi by 2 so it will be leading current will be leading the voltage by an angle of 90 degree that means in the beginning itself current will be highest um and in the case of an inductor the voltage leads and uh, but already we have taken the voltage equation as v equal vm sin omega t so we have to show that current is lagging behind so voltage leads current lags behind so that is uh, v is equal to vm sin omega t and i is equal to im sin omega t minus pi by 2 and another factor we have seen that is uh, um, uh, even inductor and cap uh, capacitor even though inductor is an instrument which can induce emf uh, uh, by itself it is simply a coil because of the change in the magnetic field and uh, capacitor is an instrument which can store energy or charges uh, even though they have their own property like that they will show some resistance to the flow of alternating current and that resistance uh, shown by the um, inductor and capacitor to the flow of ac is called reactance and they have separate formula but surprisingly we came to know that reactance of a capacitor reactance of an inductor that depends on the source Uh, across which it is connected they don't show a fixed resistance always it's a fixed reaction reactance always their re reactance depend on the um, uh, frequency of ac for example in capacitor the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to frequency inductive reactance is in, uh, directly proportional to frequency whereas resistance of a resistor depends on that material only and that dimensions of the material geometry of the material only it doesn't depend on the source a 100 ohm resistor connected to any source gives the same 100 ohm resistance but uh, in the case of capacitor and uh, inductor reactance depends on the frequency of ac so all these things we will recap it once because recapping is very important here um okay we were discussing about resistor inductor and capacitor okay we will recap everything once even with the diagram so take a pen and paper uh write it uh, in a pen and paper uh, in a paper otherwise uh, it's of no use simply if you see what i am writing you will be like a judge and i will be acting here and you will be giving marks no use because you are the person who are going to write the exam next time i am not going to write the exam i have finished my puc second pu already so you have to practice but i am giving sat and i i will give a company and you have to f either follow me or overtake me whatever it is i will guide you what you have to do take a paper take a pen and keep on writing first we will see resistor right how does a resistor respond uh, to ac and you know that if you connect an resistor of resistance r across an ac source of v is equal to vm sin omega t of course i am no, not going to do the derivation now so we will connect an ac source to a resistor like this so this is a resistor of resistance r and this ac source is having an emf of v is equal to vm sin omega t sinusoidally varying emf it is not a fixed the dc battery it is a variable battery but resistance has nothing to do with the variations with what frequency it varies whatever be the alternating emf it gives a fixed resistance if the emf increases of course current also increases because they are in phase so that's why resistance doesn't depend on the frequency okay omega angular frequency you know it so here you get a current equation as i is equal to i m because uh, v m by r i equal to v by r v by r is v m by r uh, sorry v m by v m sin omega t by r that gives i m sin omega t where or if you want we will write it once we will write it that's better with the small steps here so i is equal to v by r which is equal to v m sin omega t by r because v is sinusoidally varying and we write this as i m right so i is equal to i m sin omega t these two equations uh, show that in a purely resistive circuit ac circuit current uh, uh, and voltages are in phase there is no phase difference and they lie together when the current reaches maximum voltage also reaches maximum when current reaches zero voltage also reaches zero 
So we can show it using facer and vector diagrams. Please write it, keep on writing it. Just you can listen to me and you can concentrate on your paper because I'm doing whatever I have already done, right? Just reminding it because this is very, very important. That's why I'm going a little bit slow, okay? So voltage by white chalk like this and this is V and current by green chalk. It's identical like this, right? This is I. Okay, here it is V or I or and I, whatever it is. Here is omega t. At a particular instant, you drop a perpendicular here and find out what is the situation. At a particular instant, omega t1, say, what is the current and what is voltage? They are in phase. For a corresponding value of voltage, you will have a corresponding value of current. Similarly, when it goes to the peak, both will go to the peak. When it comes down, of course. When it comes to zero, you will have both zeros. So, if you try to find out what is the phase diagram for this here, so it is like this, and uh, okay, um, uh, yeah, this is voltage, and maybe RMS value or peak value, whatever it is, this is current. So they ha are in phase, and this is omega T1, this angle, phase angle. At that instant, at that corresponding value of voltage and corresponding value of current, they are in phase, they go together. That doesn't mean that current and voltages are same. They cannot be same. They are different quantities. Okay, so here resistance, if you want to find out the resistance value of a resistor, just divide the peak value of EMF by peak value of voltage, uh, sorry, current, and um, or RMS value of voltage divided by RMS value of current. Simply that is enough. And it has nothing to do with the frequency of AC. Frequency of AC doesn't control the resistance. Resistance of a material is independent of the source across which it is connected. It depends only on the structure of the material, dimensions of the material. Now let us connect an inductor. An inductor of self-inductance L is connected across an AC source okay, uh, of uh, alternating voltage V is equal to Vm sin omega t. Right. So we will take an AC source and connect an in, uh, sorry, first capacitor. We will connect a capacitor of capacitance C. Let V is equal to Vm sin omega t be the applied voltage. And you know, if you want to compare it with current, how does the current vary? You know, as soon as you switch it on, electrons will be ready to move from one plate to another as yes, the capacitor is charged. So in the beginning, it, there will be a heavy rush of electrons. As the time passes, the amount of electrons moving from one plate to another goes on decreasing because they find it difficult to move to the other plate. Already arrived electrons will oppose. So at the end, the flow of electrons stops. That means current becomes zero. Current is, in the beginning itself, it is highest and it becomes zero. But voltage increases as the capacitor is charged. Okay, uh, what happens here now? Current, if you want to know current, you have to write the equation for charge because I equal to dQ by dt, Q equal to C V, that is C V m sin omega t. Voltage is uh, not a fixed voltage, it can be any voltage at any instant. So this is the instant in a CMF, C V m sin omega t. So how to forget current? Current is the ra rate of change of charge, or rate of flow of charge, C V m sin omega t. You know, differentiation of sin theta is, uh, d by d theta of sin theta is cos theta into differentiation of theta. Uh, if there is something else in the place of theta, you have to differentiate it. Of course, even theta has to be differentiated, but d theta by d theta is, uh, one. So, but here you have omega t. So, what is the answer? CVM is a constant cos omega t into omega, right? This is differentiation, okay? Uh, and if you want to get I, in the same way as we got it here, Vm by R, so what you have to do? We have to do it like this. This term has to be somewhere we have to, ah, uh, here I will write it once again. CVM omega cos omega t. So if you want to get an equation like voltage by resistance, then Vm by 1 by omega c. This has to be done here. Cos omega t can be, okay, we will write it as cos omega t only. Here I don't have space. I is equal to Vm by xc cos omega t. This Vm by xc, xc is equal to 1 by omega c is the inductive reactance, right? This is called reactance of the inductor, opposition offered by the Sorry, reactance of the capacitor. Opposition offered by the capacitor to the flow of AC, alternating current. So capacitive reactance, and it depends on frequency. Okay, so Vm by Xc, this can be written as peak value of current, because peak value of voltage, we are by reactance of the capacitor. 
I is equal to I m cos omega t can be written as sine omega t plus pi by 2 right so this is equation 1 equation 2 uh, sorry equation 2 equation 2 and equation 1 show that current leads the emf by pi by 2 so you know what is the uh, leading by phase angle pi by 2 one when it, when one item one quantity is at the highest peak value other one is at zero if one when when one of them is at the peak value another is at the negative peak value then it is 180 degree phase difference just two pendulums vibrating like this see when you walk your hands are 180 degree out of phase when you are walking like this your right hand will come forward and left hand will be back exactly at the peak values plus peak minus peak so like like this that is because when you are at 180 degree out of phase your body will be at uh, rest suppose you put both the hands in phase like this you can't walk because when you both of your hands are forward if you are trying to walk like this what happens is you are, when the hands go forward to balance the body the bo whole body goes back so you lose the balance instead when your front hand goes forward your back hand go moves backward sorry your left hand uh, your right hand when it moves forward left hand moves backward so that body will be balanced how will be the prongs of the tuning fork vibrating 180 degree out of phase so when you when you hit the tuning fork when this comes for uh, inside this also comes inside they move in the opposite direction when this moves away, this also moves away. They are 180 degree out of phase because the whole tuning fork is in equilibrium position with respect to its handle like this. When you hold the handle and strike the tuning fork, your hands do not vibrate because both the prongs will maintain the equilibrium and the center of mass will be balanced here. It doesn't vibrate, but the prongs vibrate in the opposite direction. Suppose both the prongs of the tuning fork uh, move in the same direction, what happens? The whole system will be, so when it is like this, the center of mass of the whole system will be uh, disturbed and it will, uh, it will not be maintained. So force acts in one, one direction only. Here it is balanced. Okay, that's why, um, that is 180 degree out of phase, when they exactly are opposite. So if voltage when it is at the peak, if current is at the negative peak, then it is 180 degree out of phase. But this is uh, 90 degree out of phase. So current, here current and voltages are in phase and phase difference is zero here i leads leading means moving forward leads v by pi by 2 and phase angle phi is equal to pi by 2 current leads the voltage by pi by 2 so you have to show it using our phaser and the wave diagram like this like this here okay okay you have to draw the waveform yes I have the color chalks again. Right, this is voltage V. Now you have to represent I. For I, you should uh, represent the peak values here itself. When voltage just starts rising, this is at the peak value itself. When this reaches peak, this will be zero. When this is zero, minus peak. So uh, current is running uh, quickly, right? So it is like this, running like this. And when this, this reaches here, this will be at the peak here. And this, when this reaches maximum, this will be going down. So this is I. Now find out the instantaneous values at any instant of time. Okay, I'll use green chalk now. That this is the instant of time. Say I have chosen omega t1. How will be the phases? Corresponding value you write it here and here. Voltage in the same position because voltage is having the phase omega t. Correct. V is equal to Vm sin omega t. So this is volt. Oh, I have to use the white chalk because voltage is represented by white chalk. This is omega t1, right? What about the current? Current will be leading. So here is the current position, this one, purple color. Where is purple color? So this is I, okay? And this angle is 90 degrees. Hope you can see that. So this is how current leads the voltage by 90 degrees and this uh, xc is 1 by omega c it can be uh, found out using some other formulas also xc is equal to 1 by omega c is called capa capacitive reactance and it is inversely proportional to frequency and it can also be obtained by uh, dividing peak value of voltage by peak value of current or rms value of voltage to rms value of current this is also possible and you know if you draw a graph of Shall I use the same space here? If you draw a graph of reactance of the capacitor for different frequencies, 
Um, XC is inversely proportional to frequency. Here you can see that graph will be a rectangular hyperbola like this. Like this. And it shouldn't touch both the axes. Why? Because when uh, nu is uh, infinity, x is 0. So if you wait for x to be, x, uh, the reactance to be 0, we have to go up to infinity. So they shouldn't touch both the axes like this. So that is the frequency versus uh, uh, reactance graph. Okay, now we will go to the inductive uh, reactance. Um, so consider a coil of self-inductential which has no resistance at all. It is the best coil with zero resistance and connect it to an AC circuit. So let us connect an AC source to an inductor of self-inductential. Okay. Here. Yeah. Let V is equal to Vm sin omega t be the applied EMF. Equation 1. Now how will be the current? You know that here voltage leads, current lags. So we should get an equation as uh, um, I equal I m sin omega t minus pi by 2 because we get minus cos omega t there. Uh, how do we get that? So applying KVL. So using KVL, what we get? In this applied EMF, V plus induced EMF across this. There is an induced EMF here. Must be equal to 0. But what is E? E is minus LD by dt. So V is V m sin omega t and uh, E is minus LD by dt must be equal to 0. Uh, you bring this uh, to the right hand side, so plus LD by dt must be equal to Vm sin omega t. Now dt and omega t, they must be integrated together, right? So integrate sin omega t with respect to time, so LDI, L, uh, Vm, um, okay, L, uh, you can bring this uh, di and L here, Vm by L, sin omega t dt. Vm by L is a constant, right? So it need not be integrated. So what we will get then? Uh, integrating on both sides, I is equal to, what we get? Vm by L is a constant, sin omega t is minus cos omega t by omega. So after integration you get by omega. Uh, suppose you differentiate this, we get minus cos omega t differentiation is cos omega t differentiation is minus sin omega t. So that minus and this minus cancel. Sin omega t into omega, this omega gets cancelled then. So you get only sin omega t. So Vm by L minus cos omega t by omega uh, plus a constant. But this constant must be zero because there cannot be any constant for the equation for current. Current equation is a time dependent equation because we are dealing with the alternating current. So it should be varying with the time. So I is equal to Vm by L minus cos omega t and all of this one. So I is equal to Vm by omega L minus cos, okay, I will write minus cos omega t only. Uh, minus cos omega t, which can be written as sin omega t minus pi by 2. That is called Vm by XL, reactive cap capacity, uh, sorry, inductive reactance, uh, minus cos omega t. And this can be written as this omega L is taken as XL and totally this can be written as IM, peak value of current. So I is equal to IM sine uh, omega T minus pi by 2. This is the equation. So this is how we derived. I is equal to IM sine omega T minus pi by 2 where IM is equal or XL is equal to VM by IM. V by I, VRMS by IRMS and uh, XL is also equal to, uh, how did we derive XL? Omega L, Omega L or 2 pi nu L, right? So that is, uh, here inductive reactance is directly proportional to frequency. So if you draw a graph of inductive reactance versus frequency, then you will get a straight line. It is, not a, uh, it is not inversely proportional to frequency like this. It is directly proportional to frequency. Now, um, so we have to draw a graph showing the variation of current and voltage. Voltage first, like this. This is voltage. Now, so here V or I, or V and I. So here also, V or I. And this is omega T, omega T here. Yeah. Now, when voltage is leading, that means when voltage is zero, this uh, current should be a little bit 90 degree back. 
Where is 90 degree back? If you bring this 90 degree back, you will get it here, right? 90 degree face back, it is here. That means current should start with such a condition here. Did you follow that? If this voltage is in this position, it's 90 degree back face is this one. So the current should start with that back face of voltage 90 degree back. So this is, okay, I have to again search for color shocks. Where is purple chalk piece? Suddenly disappear, yeah, it is here. And uh, where is green, yeah. Okay, so you should start from here, 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 like this. And uh, so it should start from here, when it is peak here, like this. So this is current. Now you see, you can see the same diagram yesterday also in the previous class I have shown. See, now it is same as this graph, right? It is the beginning of this graph. When uh, this is at the peak, that means which is at the peak? Voltage is at the peak, current is starting at zero. That means who is leading? Voltage is leading, current is lagging. When voltage, and it, this, this is max, in the maximum itself voltage, in the, in the beginning itself, here. Yeah. If I start, I take the beginning as uh, this one. So voltage is at the beginning, current is at zero. When current reaches maximum, voltage reaches zero. So voltage leads the current by pi by two. Now we should have a phase, phasor diagram. Phasor is a vector which represents the variation of current and voltage. That vector represents the current and voltage by rotating itself in a quadrant, uh, four quadrant system. Okay, mm, yeah. Now, yeah, we have to put one, oh. Right, one condition here at a position omega t1. At the instant omega t1, what happens? Current is here, voltage is here. Voltage leads, current lags, but exactly by 90 degrees. So that is 90. Okay, I can show it as 90 like this. This is omega t1. Phase of voltage, not current. Current is here. So current la lags behind the voltage by pi by 2, right? So you can remember it like this. Here, inductive circuit, EMF leads, current lags. What about here? Capacitive circuit, current leads, EMF lags, right? It is up to you how to take it, right? So we have things here crowded, but everything is crystal clear. In a purely inductive circuit, current lags behind, voltage leads. Phase angle is same, phi is pi by two. This phi, phi is pi by two, but here minus pi by two, here plus pi by two, current leads in capacity circuit. Now, how will be the power? That is what you, so we have spent a lot of time in re recapping it. I will not recap, recap it again anywhere. Um, you have to see the videos again back. Now, um, yeah, how will be the power dissipated? You know that whenever you pass current through any component, uh, electrons collide each other, they produce heat energy. Uh, that is in resistor, what you have seen. That is, the cause for the heat energy is the collision of electrons between atoms, between themselves, to the boundary, they lose the, uh, their energy. Uh, now, when you pass uh, um, AC, uh, something surprising effect you will get. If you try to find out the average power, because you know that AC uh, increases, decreases, and it keeps on changing its value, right? Alternating current keeps on changing the value. So when the situation is like this, how will be the power developed in the uh, circuit? Can, can we find out the power is so much? We have to find out the average power dissipated in the circuit. In order to do that, we will find out the average values. Because voltage and current vary sinusoidally, both contain sine theta. So how will we find out the average power? Let us take a resistor first. So shall I rub this or shall I write it here? I have enough space, right? Average power consumed or average power dissipated in uh, AC circuit. If you take a resistor first, it is very easy now. You know, power formula is I squared R, right? Or V squared by R or V into I. You can use any formula. V squared by R is equal to V into I. If you substitute V as I R, V is equal to I R, you get this one. If you substitute I is equal to V by R, you get this one. Now here for a resistor, I will use power is equal to I squared R equation. It becomes easier. Average power, I will write as P bar. P bar means average power. That means uh, when the current is low, 
when the current is high, when the current is the somewhat uh, average value, all the powers, the power dissipated is more, less, zero, something like that. And all the powers averaged, you have to get it like this. So the way in which we write uh, the equations is like this. Average power consumed in a purely resistive circuit is I squared R, I will use that equation. And what is I squared R? What is the equation for current in a uh, resistive circuit? You know that in a resistive circuit, current and voltages are in phase. Both have sine omega t equation. They don't have sine omega t plus pi by 2 or minus pi by 2, something like that. We have only I equal to I m, I m sine omega t, right? square r and if you want to write what is the average power you have to write it like this we show it like this average power consumed is average this is the, how do we write average uh, i am sin omega t r this one whole square average power now this is equal to average power consumed is equal to i m square is a, a peak value Peak value is always same because once uh, the peak value is decided as 5 amperes, every time when the cycle gets repeated, the peak value attained is same. In the second half cycle, peak value will not be 4 amperes. In the next uh, third cycle, peak, will not be, peak value will not be 6 amperes. It will be 5 ampere only always. So I can uh, take this I m square outside. And what about R? R is also a fixed value. It doesn't change uh, from cycle to cycle and it doesn't depend on the uh, number of cycles of AC. I m squared r doesn't come under average value. That means you have to take the average value of sine square omega t. Right? Now, very important part, not as a case of derivation for the examination, understanding purpose. Final formula is very important. I m squared r into average value of sine square omega t. How do you get the average value of sine square theta? You know that average value of sine theta is zero, not sine square theta, sine theta is zero. Because as you vary sine theta um, uh, from 0 to 180, you get all the positive values. From 180 to 360, you will get all the negative values. For each positive value within 180, there is a negative value after 180. So average value of uh, uh, sine theta for one full cycle, when you complete it from 0 to 360 degree, it is 0. But what about sine square theta? Even if you get negative values after 180, when you square it, it becomes positive. So what we will do? We will do it like this. Power average is equal to I m squared r into average value of sine square theta can be obtained like this. Or you can use integration also here. Integration means average value. Uh, of course, of course, integration divided by 2 pi you have to do. Average it over the whole 2 pi values. Now, integration, uh, sorry, uh, the average value or oh, sine square omega t can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2. Average value of this. 1 minus cos 2 omega 2 by 2. Average value. So, I will, yes, I will use a projection here. P bar is equal to I m squared r into, okay, average value of half minus uh, 1 by 2 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 minus average value of cos 2 omega 2 by 2 omega t by 2 any cos theta any sine theta will have average value 0 so average value of this over one full cycle is 0 of course if you are going for integration you have to divide it by 2 pi but numerator itself becomes 0 because all the values when the sine theta cos theta values are uh, added from 0 to two, uh, 360 totally will get 0. So here we will take this, uh, even though you have a 2, derive, 2 in the denominator, whatever it is, cos 2 omega t gives, it is like simply cos theta, it gives 0 value average. But what about this half? Half remains 1 by 2 minus cos 2 omega 2 by 2. So this average value is 0. So what is the average power developed or dissipated in a purely resistive circuit in AC? Average power developed is uh, I m square r into 1 by 2 only this much right now why can't we write it beautifully like this average power is equal to i m by root 2 correct whole square i m by root 2 because i have a very famous value in uh, <coughs> ac that is called rms value because it is very helpful if you take the rms value of ac 
that RMS value numerical number itself is the DC value which is required to produce the same amount of heat, isn't it? Suppose RMS, if I indicate this is a source of uh, 100 volt RMS value, what do you mean by that? That source of 100 volt RMS value, that AC can reach more than 100 uh, peak, its peak value is more than 100, but its RMS is uh, 100, what do you mean by that? that, that um, its peak value may be 140 volt, but its RMS is 100 volt. That means even if you connect a 100 volt DC, uh, it is one and the same. Amount of heat energy produced is same. That is uh, uh, the beauty of RMS value. So try to express this in RMS value. This is 1 by 2 equal I m by root 2 whole square. Then it becomes I m squared by 2. So it is uh, one and the same. That is R. So shall I write it as I RMS square into R. This formula is uh, very similar to the formula that we get in the current electricity, DC circuits. Power dissipated in any DC circuit is I squared R, right, where I is the steady current value, DC current value, direct current value, which, has, which is nothing, uh, which is not varying with the time, it is a steady current. Same uh, idea we have got it here. So, where I RMS is the RMS value of current. So now the same thing can be defined again. So if you replace the peak value, instead of peak value, if you replace it by peak value by root 2, the formula uh, obtained for power dissipation is the same as the power dissipated in a DC circuit. So average power consumed in any purely resistive DC circuit, or sorry, AC circuit, is RMS value of current square into R. So what you can do is from here onwards, you can use the same formulas, whatever you have got in DC circuits, except one thing, don't use peak value of AC, use RMS value of AC, that's all. If you use RMS value of AC, all the formulas in AC circuits will be similar to the DC circuit formulas. That means what is RMS value of AC? RMS value of AC is that uh, DC value which will produce the same heating effect in a given resistor in a given time. Okay, we have defined it already, but this is another, another way of uh, defining it. So, in a purely resistive circuit, average power developed is I square R. But here, remember, I square, I is RMS value, it is not peak value, okay, which produces the same amount of heat as DC. Now, what about the average power developed in a capacitive or inductive circuit? Let us see that. Average power developed in a capacitive or inductive circuit. Okay, if you go try to go for that, uh, I will rub this one, I will use from here. So if you want to find out what is the average power developed in a capacitive or inductive circuit, so P bar, now I will write V into I equation, voltage into current, uh, because they have a phase difference. Uh, if you, and even if you use V square by R here, you will get the same situation finally. You will get V by R, uh, 1 by root 2 and all. Um, so you will get average uh, that RMS value of voltage, V squared by the um, R formula, that's all, where V RMS is the RMS value of voltage. But here current and voltages have a phase difference, that's why I have used this equation. Average power consumed, average of this one, right, P bar is equal to average of, now you see, you see here the previous equations, I m sin omega t plus pi by 2, because we had I m cos omega t. I is equal to Vm by reactance, that is Im cos omega t. What about here? Same thing, Vm by XL, that is inductive reactance, and into minus cos omega t, that's all. When you take the average, I can do it like this. V into, so for example, uh, in a uh, capacitive circuit, V is Vm sin omega t, I is Im cos omega t, right? So what I can do? Average power develop is equal to uh, Vm into Im sin omega t cos omega t. Okay. Now I will multiply by 2 and divide by 2. Multiply by 2, divide by 2. Because 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta. You know it. So average power consumed is equal to Vm Im by root uh, by 2 into this can be written as sin 2 omega t. Because sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta. Average power consumed is equal to. Uh, now, what about the uh, average power of Vm, Im by 2 and average of sin 2 omega t. You know that average of sin 2 omega t is 0. But total average power becomes 0. Because this is multiplied here. Here you see it is not multiplied. It is minus half 
1 by 2 minus cos 2 omega 2 by 2. Average of this may be 0, but this survives because it is not half into, it is half minus. Whereas here it is into, so this is 0 because average power of this is 0. Otherwise, I could have written this as Vm by root 2 into Im by root 2, right? You could have split this and we are, I would have written Vrms into Irms, but not for, for possible, it is 0. So, average power consumed in a purely capacitive as well as purely inductive because in a purely inductive circuit you will get only a small difference i don't do that it is a cos omega t that becomes minus cos omega t that's all you can take the minus sign outside here 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 rest of the things remain the same when the one of the term in the product becomes zero what is the use of negative sign it is zero so if you connect an uh, inductor or a capacitor to an ac circuit if it is theoretically or if it is uh, uh, ideally it, the inductor is a pure inductor without resistance, capacitor is a pure capacitor, then without any other effect, then the average power consumed in the form of heat is zero. Inductor and capacitor when connected to an AC circuit do not dissipate any amount of heat energy. Electrical energy is not lost in the form of heat. That is the beauty of those two components in an AC circuit. That is why we use, suppose we want some voltage, voltage drop to be applied to a component. In DC circuits, we use a resistor. In AC circuits, we don't use a resistor. The reason, resistor dissipates power which is equal to IRMS square R, I squared R, where I is the RMS value of current. In uh, NCRT books, you don't get this RMS suffix. Huh? You get it as bold letter, bold letter I square R. Bold letter means it is RMS value. So, I squared R, it dissipates heat energy, resistor dissipates heat, heat energy, it uh, uh, produces heat energy and produces loss of electrical energy. And that's why we use capacitor and inductor. If you use capacitor and inductor, without loss of heat energy, we will be able to get the potential difference. And that can be applied to any other components which are used in AC circuits. You might have used a cylindrical small battery-like arrangement. It is not battery, in a tube light. In a tube light we use, nowadays electronic tube light don't show that. But in ordinary tube lights, we have a cho choke. A choke coil means it is a duster-like arrangement. See, it, it is of some, a size of a duster. Yeah, in the tube light, there will be uh, a frame, and over the frame, uh, there will be, suppose this is the frame of the tube light, and here will be a small um, uh, equipment. And if you open it, you will see a coil wound over an iron core. That is choke. And uh, in the old uh, uh, tube lights, there will be a cylindrical type of battery-like arrangement. It is not battery. It is a capacitor. We use inductor, choke, and capacitor in an NAC circuit because they don't uh, dissipate any power. So, if you use an inductor, if you use a capacitor in an any AC circuit, it doesn't dissipate any power, it doesn't uh, produce any heat energy. Therefore, current in such a circuit is called wattless current. So, what is wattless current? Wattless current, current flowing through purely capacitive AC circuit or purely inductive AC circuit is called wattless current. Why? Because it doesn't produce any heat energy when while flowing through pure inductor or capacitor. So, the, because the average power consumed is zero, right? So, power average is zero, but in resistor it dissipates heat energy and it converts heat electrical energy into the form of heat. So, we don't use resistor. So, that may be a question for one mark. Why don't we use resistor in AC circuits? Because it dissipates heat energy. Why do we use a, a capacitor or inductor in AC circuits to produce a, a voltage drops, a potential difference? Because when inductor and capacitor are used, uh, energy, uh, no en heat energy is produced. No energy is wasted in the form of heat. And what is wattless current? When an AC circuit is connected to, or when an AC source is connected to a pure capacitor or pure inductor, average power dissipated is zero. The current flowing in that circuit now doesn't produce any heat energy. That's why it is called wattless current, because watt is the unit for heat. Less means no watt. No watt means no heat energy, so wattless current. Uh, okay, and you can have an uh, equation, general equation for uh, power consumed in an AC circuit. Of course, we are going to derive it at the end. Average power consumed in any AC circuit is Vrms into Irms into cos phi. You can use this equation. Here, Vrms, Irms, you know, average value of voltage, uh, sorry, Rms value of voltage, Rms value of current. Cos phi is called power factor. Simply use cos phi. 
Average value, what is phi? It is not cos omega t, it is cos phi. Phi is the phase difference between current and voltage. Cos phi. So phi is the phase difference between current and voltage. Okay. Um, if phi is 0 in the case of uh, resistor. That's why this does, equation doesn't reduce to 0. We have VRMS into IRMS. Cos phi, cos 0 is 1. In a purely inductive and capacitive circuit, phi is pi by 2. Whether current leads or current lags, whatever it is, phi is pi by 2. When you substitute phi is equal to pi by 2, what you will get? Power is equal to VRMS into IRF is, I mean, to cos 90, cos pi by 2 is 0, power is 0. So, these things are very important, the, uh, not this derivation. I don't say, this is just you look into this derivation and try to understand it. It will not be asked for the exam. Uh, 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 just you have to understand it, how it is obtained. For entrance exams and all, we must understand it because we must know why, how it is obtained. Why it is the, uh, this uh, RMS values of current? Why can't you use peak value multiply IM, IM square into R? Why can't you put it like that? So, it is not. It is IM squared into R by 2, isn't it? It is not simply IM squared by R. IM squared R. By 2 you get. Instead, you can use uh, that uh, RMS value. So, that is about the power consumed. I don't repeat all these things. This is the last uh, uh, time I am going to write this. So, uh, you can uh, uh, study this. You see, these three derivations. Uh, uh, of course, I have rubbed this. Resistive, capacitive, inductive. You should be very thorough in that. Formulas. Make a list of formulas. Uh, in resistive circuit, equation for voltage, equation for current, phase difference, inductive circuit, equation for current, equation for voltage, phase difference, and XL, XC, formulas, make a list of them. It should be very firm and very uh, uh, nicely kept inside your brain. And uh, of course, if it is very clear, we can go to the next part, which is very important, that is a uh, um, re series resonance circuit. Once we go there, it's a very beautiful ending of uh, uh, electrical resonance. We will study that in the next class. Of course, it doesn't come to an end in a single class. It may lead to two or three classes. But still, we will continue. Thanks for watching my class. Take care of your health and um, keep studying. Don't waste time. Thank you.